It is the Martha Zoller Show. It's always great to be here, and it's always great to be talking to Congressman Mike Collins. We've got him here today. Mike, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Martha? I'm doing great. Listen, a lot happened since we talked last week, and uh, wanted to just talk to you first about the Lake and Riley bill, because I know we got it passed in the House in a big bipartisan way. I know you spent a lot of time over in the Senate last week. Just update us about that. Well, we we did, and uh, you know, as, as I've always said, I'm just an old school type person. I like to go see uh, my customer, or the person I'm trying to convince in this case, and that's the Senate. And so we've met uh, personally with uh, both Georgia senators. Uh, I thought they were good, productive meetings. Um, you know, uh, Senator Warnock had a few questions that uh, you know on the policy side, which I understand, and uh, that that's just doing your job. And so we're going to get back with him with those answers, and uh, he as well as us off, and and because uh, we'd love to have our our Georgia senators behind us on this. This is this is their constituent as well. Uh, you know, Martha, we're we're not stopping there. We're we're lining up meetings with uh, with as many senators as we can. Well, and I tell you too, what the last count I saw was that uh, all the Republicans are in favor of it but they needed two Democrats to make it work. Well, that's our two Georgia senators. So what's your thoughts about whether they are going to cross over and vote for your bill, or are they going to try to create their own bill? Well, and, and I hope that we don't go down that line of trying to create your own bill. I mean, this is a good, solid, common-sense bill that's already passed the House. We're not trying to do political work here. We're just trying to do good policy, and, and there is a difference in that. And, and this right now, this young lady has become the symbol of what the crisis is in this country. And, and we don't need to get into the political war on this. We just need to give our law enforcement the tools that they can use to, to, to try to make sure that this never happens again. Uh, because if this, this act, if this would have been law, uh, a bearer would have been picked up and detained when he got uh, pulled over shoplifting and he would have been deported. And so, you know, we can have the larger issue, the larger battles on, on immigration. On, you know, we've got a narrow majority in the Senate, and we've got a narrow majority in the House. The House has passed a, uh, an immigration bill. It's in the Senate. And, and I know we're at loggerheads over that. But this is something that, that, that's not, and it's, it's proved it's not because it went through the House so fast, we didn't really have a chance to whip that bill. And you saw 37 Democrats just join on in less than one week can help us get this thing across the finish line with just fantastic bipartisanship. Well, we're going to keep putting pressure on there. And I, and I got to tell you, as far as the uh, immigration bill, H.R. 2, that was passed last year, you know, what I've been pushing our senators to do is what they used to do in the Senate, that if they really do believe that their bill, their so-called compromise bill, is a better way to go, then take up H.R. 2, add the compromise as an amendment, pass it, and then go to conference committee. And let's have a real discussion instead of this politics that they're playing with what they like to call comprehensive immigration reform. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's that simple. And, and that's what we've been saying as well, you know. Take it up, vote it up, vote it down, amend it however you want, and then send it back. And then that, at least that starts a real conversation behind closed doors uh, where you can really iron this thing out. Uh, but, but in the case of Lake and Riley Act, you really don't have to do that. It's, it's just that simple. And, uh, you know, we're always trying to help protect our, the, the motoring public out there by trying to give law enforcement the tools they need, and that's, that's as simple as this bill can, can explain to people. And, and it, the, other thing, the other good thing it gives is, is it puts a little teeth in it uh, from the state side to where if the federal government doesn't want to do that, then you can uh, you can take the federal government to, to federal court and uh, get injunctive relief where a judge will tell them to go do their job. Well, we're going to keep pushing, and I appreciate you doing the work on this. Let's move on uh, to the budget. Uh, the uh, so-called minibus was passed. Um, you know, I'm not surprised it ended up the way it did I, it was a big bipartisan vote, but a lot of Republicans voted against it, as well as a number of Democrats voted against it. You were one of the people that voted against it. So tell us 
what the problems are with this bill and where does it get us? That's the bigger question. There, there's a lot of money spending in this thing that uh, got added at the last minute from the other chamber. Um, there's a lot of uh, social things in it that I don't believe in with the LBGQ stuff that were, that were pushed back into this thing. But at the end of the day, Martha, I am not, I, I, I campaigned on this. I'm not for an omnibus, a minibus, an electric bus, any bus. <laughs> it's, it's appropriations. We don't have that hard of a job description in that town out there. And, and we've got to get back to appropriating these federal agencies. And when we do that, we'll be able to bring a lot of this stuff under control and a lot of these problems that we've been seeing uh, throughout the country with overspending and just overreach. But, uh, you know, you knew it was going to pass because, you know, it was the majority of it was Nancy Pelosi's budget. You know, what we're doing is basically continuing that. Uh, with well, some addition. I mean, to that point, um, Kevin McCarthy actually was able to negotiate a, a a budget. I didn't like it, but it was better than the one we ended up with. But they vacated him. And I know you you did not you were not in support of that. Uh, no. There's you know, so so we're really in a worse position than we were. I'm not blaming Mike Johnson for that, though. I think it's because of the time we took and the way we acted for several weeks it really hurt us. So where are we now regarding Speaker Johnson? And did Kevin McCarthy actually negotiate a better deal than what we ended up with? You know, I would say yes, that we, we, we didn't get the best deal that we had to begin with. That's a, because you're exactly right. We vacated the chair at a bad time, bad time. Um, and we had been passing some appropriation bills, and then we spent, you know, the better part of a month uh, trying to, to get a new speaker. And, that, and all that does is just add, you know, you may say it's four weeks, but in, in, in federal government time, you might as well say it's a year. Uh, so, I mean, it just added time, and, and, and you knew that Mike Johnson came in. He came behind the eight ball. He didn't have a good shot. He didn't have a play. I know that, but that's done now. That, no matter how you say it, slice it, it's, it's over. Um, we have a one seat majority. And you better believe that if, if we walk in that chamber any day and we don't have the majority of Republicans sitting in there, you're going to get a vacate the chair. Because they can all call it up. And uh, anybody can. And you're going to get a new speaker. So we need to be careful about that. And we all need to be making sure that we stay, you know, that we're, we're in D.C. But uh, we're in 2025 now, and I'm expecting a budget. I need that budget out now, and we need to start working on appropriation bills. We need that budget so that we can get a top-line number to what the appropriators work towards. And, uh, and we need to start working towards those numbers. We need to start kicking these appropriation bills out and over to the Senate. And then that way they cannot jam us and say that we're not doing our job since we're supposed to start appropriations. Yeah, so is, has any work been done on the 2025 budget? Yes, that budget is put together right now. We need to drop it. Good. It needs to be brought up. Yeah, because you're not too far behind the eight ball at this point in time because the when we used to follow the rules, you, you had a budget by April 15th. You had a framework for a budget by April 15th. You... Uh, moved on from there to get the appropriations bills, and then you would get it passed, hopefully, before you went into August recess so that you could come back and get it going. Because I tell you, my my son works for USDA, and he's in the animal um, research side of it, where they, in the poultry side. He says, we can't start an animal project, if an animal research project, if we have two months of funding at a time. You know, because you can't, yeah. you can't handle the animals... Uh, for a period of time, if your money might run out in two months. So it's That's right. there's a lot of things in the federal government that they're just sitting on their thumbs, not working. So we've got an inefficient federal government anyway. Okay. Then we do this three months at a time, four months, five months, six months, whatever it is. And we don't do our budget on time. And we make it more inefficient because there are areas of the government that can't function if they don't have an actual budget to deal with. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. They they spend more time preparing for a shutdown 
then they do anything. Yes. You know, so every time we do these short-term continuous resolutions or anything like that, uh, you're right, the, the federal government spends all their time, well, let's, uh, let's get ready to shut down and go home. And, uh, and so we've got we've to finish doing our job. We've, we've got to get on top of that. I, and I, I feel certain that uh, the majority of the people in the Republican caucus, we are, we're ready to roll with it. We just got to make sure that we do. We, we go ahead and get those numbers, Martha, the budget, and we stick to it. We don't change once we get going. And it's like, well, you know, that's not what we want to do. These side deals, all of these behind, whatever these little extra deals were, uh, Speaker Johnson has assured us that, that that's no longer the, the case. Uh, so everything should be out in the open, and we all should have the same numbers. Mike Collins, I appreciate you being with us this morning, giving us this update. And um, we'll keep talking with you because we got to get the work done. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mike. Yes, ma'am. We're going, to take, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to keep talking with you right here on the Martha Zoller Show.